How to create a rope brush in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about how do you create a rope brush in Adobe Illustrator. Now this tutorial can be used for all sorts of other brushes as well. Uh, but today we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to do the rope brush and you guys can play with it and make any other sorts of custom brushes as you see fit. The same um, application will work for those two. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and you can also hit hotkey L if you'd like. I'm going to create something about that big. That's good for now. And then I'm going to grab the uh, anchor point tool. You can also do shift plus C. That's the hotkey. I'm going to just click the top and bottom anchor points here um, to create straight lines. So they're curved on the side and straight up at top. Now, what I'll want to do is um, I've got my um, direct selection tool here, hotkey A. And if you want to grab these two points, you want to align the top to the right and the bottom to the left. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. I'll show you one way for the top and do another way for the bottom. You can come over here to a line after you've selected only those two points. You can either click and drag or you can click and shift click right on the points themselves. So two different ways of selecting. Come over to your align uh, panel, which should be window align if you don't see it. And then you want to make sure that this is set to align to selection, not align to artboard. Otherwise, those points are going to fly all the way to the right of your artboard. So align to selection. They're both selected. I want to click align horizontal right. Boom. There you go. The other way you can do this is if uh, under view, smart guides are checked. Control U. If you do that, you can just click on this and drag it over. I'm holding shift to stay in line horizontally here. Um, and I should say vertically. Um, and you'll see it just kind of snaps. So that's... I like to do that a lot of the time um, just because it's fewer steps. I don't have to select these and come over here and find this and click that and whatever. So I'll just kind of grab things that way. Uh, next thing you want to do is just grab one of your sides with uh, two of the points. And then I would hit shift and up on your arrow key. Um, maybe one more time. That's probably good. Let's go with that and see how that looks. Um, next thing I want to do is I'm going to bump this up to maybe 16 on the stroke. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this just a little bit. Maybe, maybe there, maybe a little less. Let's go, let's go right there. I like that. Now, <clears throat> what, what you'll want to do is create two copies of this. So you'll have three total. Um, and what you'll do is as you're clicking on this, um, I've got it selected with my selection tool here and I'm clicking and moving but as I'm moving I'm holding down alt which gives me a copy you'll see the two uh, my cursor turns to two arrows instead of one by holding alt that means you're making a copy I'm also holding shift which will keep everything in line and I think snap to grid is on I don't want that sometimes that gets checked on every now and then when I'm in Illustrator so I don't want that as you could see it was kind of just jumping a certain amount so that's really annoying Good tip though, if you run into that problem. Um, I want these to align perfectly on this line. See, um, when I hover, let me switch over to outline view, which is control Y, and you'll see there's a gap. <clears throat> I don't want there to be a gap. So I'm gonna grab this again, holding shift, just bringing it over there and aligning that right on top of it. That looks great. Now I wanna make one more, again, shift and alt to create a copy and keep it all within the same plane here. And I'm going to make sure that these are aligned on that edge and they look really good. Now I'm going to hit control Y again to go out of outline view and just kind of take a look at what I have. You can see how this is going to start to look like a rope. <clears throat> it's looking good. So next thing you're going to do is grab a rectangle tool. And this is to create a section because you don't, what you're going to do with these brushes is just create a section that's repeatable. Now, as it is, this wouldn't be repeatable, and I'll show you why, because if we repeated it, um, and it uses the front edge here and the back edge here. So what it would do is if we 
put this into a brush as is, it would start repeating at about here. And so you'd have this gap and there'd be no way to fix it within the brush to get it to look right. So what you have to do is grab your rectangle tool and, and grab a section here. What I like to do is um, start and end on the same spot. So I'm gonna start here at this anchor point and I'm gonna end here at this anchor point on the next piece. So it's, it's the same distance. Um, every time this is repeated, it's gonna be the exact same part. It's gonna begin here and end here and the next one's gonna begin here and end here and so on. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Let me just kind of take away the stroke and fill on that. I'm also gonna send it to the background. You can right click, tran uh, arrange, and uh, send to back. And so I've got everything selected with that, that bounding box in the background that has no, no information in it. And I'm gonna click and drag these over to the brush and say pattern brush, hit okay. And then as you see, it will automatically kind of show you what this looks like and we're looking very good. You don't have to worry so much about the corner thing. There are some auto um, capabilities here that are okay. Uh, you could just say none. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't really matter for these rope things because typically with rope, you're not gonna have a 90 degree angle. It's gonna be curved. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it here. But sometimes when you're making these um, brushes, you'll, you'll need to keep in mind the, the various angles that you might have and there you can see all the different options for that but we're not going to get into that detail today so i'm just going to hit okay and there's my brush it made it it worked and i'm going to grab let's just grab an ellipse make a big circle and click on that there you go now it's a little bit big i'd probably bring this down to 25 percent and say apply to strokes that looks good and now you can see i have a very good looking rope you know, very easy to make. I just did this and boom, I can put this on anything. You can come over here and grab a brush tool and start painting stuff with your brush if you want to. I, I could put my name out here if I wanted to. Yeah, really ugly, I know. <laughs> That's just me with a quick mouse though. But you get the idea. It's very, very handy um, to have that brush tool like that. Um, the next thing I wanna show you is kinda like the way you can modify this. Now that you've got one here, um, you could uh, in essence, just make a whole bunch of different types here. So um, we could come in and change the color. If we want to get something that's actually maybe a little more brown, let's grab this. Yeah. So come in, come over here, do the brush, put it in here. Pattern brush, uh huh. 25% is what we want to do. Looks good. <clears throat> and then we can just come in here and make a copy of that. And there's a brown one. So there you go. That looks a little bit more like a brown rope color where this is more of just a silhouette, black and white kind of thing. And of course you could even do more than that. Say you want to add some kind of texture to this. Let's see if we can do a, um, maybe we'll use brush tool. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to do something else? Let's use a pen tool. Um, I'm just going to make some squigglies. <clears throat> so... I don't want there to be any fill. I just want to have like a black stroke for now. And we'll just see maybe something like that. And then maybe something like this. Also, quick tip. Uh, if you're doing something like that with your mouse and you're not very good with your hand, just bump this up to smooth all the way. Um, it will make everything appear nicer. So like, as you'll see, that's not very smooth, but oh, it smooths out rather nicely when it's set to that. So I'm gonna do something like that. This looks fine, I think. I'm gonna just go with this. We're going to first grab this and say object, path, outline stroke, and then I am going to go to Pathfinder and hit trim. It's this bottom row, uh, second one from the left. There you go. Now right click on that and hit ungroup. Reason I'm doing this is I just want to affect this inner part here and I'm clicking it and dragging it away so you can see that it is separated. Now I'm gonna shift click on both of these squiggly lines that I just made. Actually, I'm gonna lower this just a tad, maybe even bring it over just a tad, maybe bump that up just a little. Not a big difference, but I just thought it would look a little nicer. All right, with all three of these selected, I shift click to get all of these selected. You come back over to Pathfinder and hit divide. Now it should look something like this. Again, I wanna right click 
ungroup so that these pieces are individual now. All right, now I'll keep this top color the same. That looks fine. I'm gonna come over to my swatches and grab a darker color for the middle and an even darker color for the bottom section. And <clears throat> then I'm going to take this whole piece. I'll probably just group it, Control G. You can also right click and hit group, which would be here if it were, were not grouped. And then I'm gonna make copies of this um, and replace these two. So I just did the same thing with holding Shift and Alt to make a copy. If you've already made a copy and it's in a good spot, you can hit Control D and it will make another copy at exactly the same distance from the one you just made. Really handy, uh, highly recommend that you do that. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these layers in the back. I wanna keep that little bounding box, but let me just make sure, yes, that looks good. I've got my bounding box, everything looks great. We're gonna bring it over into the brushes panel and say pattern again. I think I'll do the same 25%. Should be good. Now, let me make another circle here and we'll add sort of the more textured look. So as you can see, this looks a little bit more, I don't know, fun, cartoony, ha adds a little depth to it. Um, and you, you can change this up as much as you want. You know, you don't have to do it just like I did. You can um, make, uh, maybe you can make an alternating pattern with two of these. You would just have to basically make this box double long um so it would come out to about roughly here um, and then this would be like a second color and you'd have to change this color as well so a lot of possibilities uh for stuff like this but anyway uh like subscribe uh, comment down below i really need lots of comments to help my uh, videos grow I, I tend to not get as many of those so if you did like this you find it helpful go ahead and leave a comment down below for me. It really helps me generate some more interest on YouTube and, and get ranked higher with my videos. And then always hit that uh, the like button plus the notification bell so that you will be aware of new content as it's coming out. All right, guys, I will see you guys in the next video.